Hello, everyone. My name is Kenji Miyazawa. Today, I'm going to talk about our current research work, exploration of TFPI-mediated inhibitor mechanism in coagulation flow model. Coagulation is a process involving a series of chemical reactions to form a clot to stop the blood loss from vessels. The process initiates with exposure of tissue factor, followed by activation and aggregation of platelets and the various coagulation factors. The end product thrombin will cleave fibrogen into fibrin monomer, which polymerizes and forms a fibrin meshwork to physically stabilize the clot. Final product thrombin is activated from prothrombin by a complex called prothrombinase. And this prothrombinase is a complex made of coagulation factor 10A and factor 5A. Serine protease inhibitor TFPI can inhibit factor 10A to reduce the thrombin generation to lower the strength of the clot. A new study shows that TFPI can also bind partially activated form of factor 5A, which we call it factor 5A short, to influence the coagulation. However, the details of platelet surface dependent TFPI mediated inhibition of thrombin generation is not well understood. Therefore, the objective of our study is to construct a new mathematical model with new TFPI inhibitory mechanism and study how such inhibition will affect the thrombin generation and how this mechanism will influence bleeding disorders, particularly hemophilia A. Before we dive into model and results, allow me to introduce some biology regarding the TFPI, factor 5A, and factor 10A. Factor 5 is a precursor of factor 5A that has to be activated first to act as cofactor for the prothrombinase. It can be fully activated by cutting off the whole B domain, but sometimes part of the B domain will be cleaved, remaining in the acidic region, and become factor 5A short. Tissue factor pathway inhibitor, TFPI, has three Kunis domain and a C terminus, where Kunis 2 um, can inhibit factor 10A and C terminus can bound to factor 5A short. The reason why TFPI and 5A short can bind each other is that the C terminus of the TFPI has almost the same sequence as the basic region of 5A short. Therefore, C terminus of TFPI and 5A short can bind each other um, by the interaction between basic and acidic region. Based on these interactions, there are other possible reactions that we can think about. Since both factor 10A and 5A short can be inhibited by TFPI, and they can form prothrombinase complex to generate thrombin. Is it po possible for TFPI to directly inhibit prothrombinase by binding to factor 5A short or binding to factor 10A? Since the binding sites for factor 10A and 5A short are far apart on TFPI, is it possible for TFPI to bind factor 10A and 5A short at the same time while there is no interaction between factor 10A and 5A short? Therefore, we are including all the possible interactions between TFPI, factor 10A, and fiber short into the coagulation flow model to study about how each species and reactions are influencing the thrombin output. The model that we are using was built on the base of coagulation flow model. This model describes the tissue factor pathway coagulation, and it takes into account plasma phase, membrane-bound phase, damogens, enzymes, coagulation inhibitors, and platelets. We assume that all the reactions are happening in the thin shell right above the entry site. Therefore, we can ignore the spatial concentration difference and solve the system with ODE functions. TFPI reactions were translated into mathematical equations, and then the model was used to investigate how variations in TFPI can affect thrombin generation in normal and hemophilia A blood. Now let's look at some of the results we got from these models. We're going to look at how various TFPI levels are going to affect the system, and also how TFPI is going to influence hemophilia A blood. First, we tried to vary the TFPI levels. In the previous models, the model had a little response to the various TFPI levels. And now we want to see how TFPI levels are going to influence the thrombin output in the new model. This plot shows the thrombin generation but changing TFPI from 0 to 10. If we look at the simulation in the original, in original model, we do not see any differences in the thrombin generation, even though if we zoom in, 
We can still see some of the difference, but such difference is insignificant. On the other hand, in the new model, we can see a different behavior. We see that under low tissue TFPI level, there will be a huge thrombin generation, whereas if we increase TFPI to a certain amount of level, where in this case, there will be a TFPI uh, between 3 to 3.5, there will be no more thrombin burst in the system due to the suppression of the coagulation by TFPI. Next, we try to study the hemophilia A blood with this model. Hemophilia A is a genetic disorder caused by deficiency in coagulation factor 8. Previous study shows that lower factor 5 can rescue thrombin generation, and such rescue is amplified with higher prothrombin concentration. Now we want to know how these newly added reactions are going to change these observations. In these figures, we are increasing prothrombin from left to right, and we are increasing factor 5 from up to down, and blue, red, and yellow curves or lines are increasing TFPI levels by 50% to 150%. We are fixing factor 8 concentration to 1% to recreate hemophilia A blood. Therefore, if we only look at the middle figure over here, the red line uh, in the middle figure represents a normal hemophilia A blood case, uh, which uh, is also is not reaching one nanothrombin thrombin generation. Therefore, there is no burst of the thrombin generation in the hemophilia A blood. Now, uh, let's only look at the single row. By increasing the prothrombin concentration, we see that there is an acceleration in the thrombin generation. Also, if you only look at individual columns, by decreasing factor 5 concentration, we also observe the increasing in the thrombin generation from up bottom to the up. Therefore, we can see that in the top right figure here, when we increase prothrombin and the decrease factor 5 by 50%, there will be the maximum rescue of the thrombin generation, which corresponds to the previous study observations. But one thing we need to notice is that in any cases, by lowering TFPI level by 50%, can rescue the thrombin generation drastically, even without the change in prothrombin or factor 5 concentration which means that by altering TFPI itself is sufficient to rescue thrombin generation in hemophilia A patient. In conclusion, the system displays remarkably different thrombin generation under different TFPI levels. Under the hemophilic conditions, rescuing TFPI, uh, reducing TFPI to 50% can substantially alter the thrombin generation and then make a firm clot suggesting that TFPI may be an effective therapeutic target for bleeding disorders. In the future, we will further investigate the coagulation system with this new model. We will determine the most significant reaction step for the TFPI-mediated inhibitory mechanisms, and we will perform sensitivity analysis to assess the sensitivity of the system towards initial concentrations and kinetics. Finally, I would like to say thank you to Dr. Karen Lederman, our collaborator, Dr. Aaron Fogelson, to assist me with the work, as well as the support from Lederman's research group. I would also like to mention that this research is funded by NSF Career Award and National Institute of Health. Thank you for your listening.